Okay, so you've been asked to find the voltages across three capacitors, and those voltages across the capacitors, those those uh, capacitors are all in series with each other. Okay, all of those capacitors are in se pardon me, not series. They're in parallel. They're in parallel with each other. Um, so we have capacitor number one here that's in parallel with capacitor number two, which is in parallel with capacitor number three, and they're all in parallel with that five volt voltage source. The three capacitors are. Capacitor number one is a one microfarad capacitor. Capacitor number two is a one microfarad capacitor. And capacitor number three is a 4.7 uh, microfarad capacitor. Okay. So given that that's the case, we have those three capacitors there. Let's go ahead now and uh, lay out our uh, capacitors on the paper here. So capacitor number one is going to be connected across here. Capacitor number two is going to be connected across here and capacitor number three is going to be connected across here now capacitor number three is a polarized capacitor and what that means is that there's a negative terminal and a positive terminal this side here that's marked with a negative sign on it and I don't know how clear that is let's move that back just a little bit I don't know how clear that is but that's a uh, that's the negative terminal right here and we have positive terminal. Negative terminal indicates the end of lower potential. So since the end of lower potential is on the bottom here for the capacitor, this end is the end of higher potential. The positive end needs to be up here. Again, the negative end is the end that's marked on the capacitor. And that's this side. And so therefore, that needs to be at the bottom. All right. And again, this is connected to a 5 volt voltage source. So let's go ahead now and put that into our circuit. And for our circuit, we're going to use, to put together our circuit, we're going to use a breadboard. And this is our breadboard here. And in this breadboard, or on this breadboard, all right, on this breadboard, we have two terminals a positive terminal and a negative terminal. Those are where our voltage supply is going to be connected into the uh, circuit. And so let's start by connecting capacitor number one into our circuit. And so this is capacitor number one right here. And connect capacitor number one. And then we have capacitor number two. And capacitor number three. And again, the negative terminal needs to be lower down. This one, the legs are a little bit shorter. So we're gonna have to do a jumper in between here in order to get things kind of going. So put a jumper in here. And a wire here. All right, now before we uh, connect our circuit here. What we want to do is we want to make sure that in our circuit, the capacitors that we put in there have been discharged. In order to discharge them, I'm going to get just a simple wire with alligator clips and I'm going to connect, connect the alligator clips to both ends. Now, since the capacitors are already set in parallel, we just need to connect to one of the capacitors but for the purpose of this we're just going to go ahead connect to all of them okay and we're just going to let it sit there for a little bit and what the wire does is it's going to act as a resistor across the capacitor and it's going to take any energy that was stored across the capacitor out of the capacitor before we begin the experiment and again remember that capacitors store energy so if they've been sitting for a few minutes or a few days or a few months or a few weeks or whatever they still could possibly have energy across them so it's a good idea to go through and remove that energy or to at least just double check and make sure you short the capacitor out uh, not short the capacitor but pardon me but uh, dissipate any energy in the capacitor so now we connect to capacitor number two All right, and then we unclip by clipping here on the very end and connect on to capacitor number three. OK, 
Okay. All right, so now that we've done that on all three capacitors, let's go ahead and connect our voltage source into the capacitor. So now this is our positive going into the positive terminal, our negative from the voltage supply going to negative terminal. And I'll go ahead and just connect or turn the uh, voltage supply on. Okay. And so now we have a voltage going into the capacitor or voltages uh, or energy going into the capacitor. I'm going to move this over a little bit and we're going to use our voltage meter to check the voltage across the capacitor. And here I have a uh, voltmeter. It's already set to uh, 20 volts. And this means that that's the maximum amount of voltage we expect across any given device that we're checking. Since this is uh, we're using a 5 volt voltage source here. The maximum voltage we should be expecting is 5 volts, but there could be a possibility that we can have more than 2 volts, so that's why I use 20 volts instead of uh, the 2 volts. And also down here at the bottom, we want to make sure that our uh, red cable is going into the voltage terminal and the black cable is going into the common terminal. All right. All right, now given that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and check the voltage across the capacitors. All right, and so checking for the very first one here. Oh, oops. Let's make sure our voltage supply is on. Ah, the voltage supply is on, but here's where the problem is. I forgot to connect our voltage or the capacitors into the voltage supply. Okay, so that connects the negative terminal there. And let's make sure our positive terminals are connected to the capacitors. There we go. All right. So now let's go ahead and check our voltages. And so voltage across the first capacitor here. You're gonna take that highest voltage because remember again, okay, I'm seeing 4.6, 4.88 is the highest voltage I see across the second capacitor. Oops, more than one mistake here apparently. All right, so apparently again, I forgot to connect something and that was to connect side number one of the breadboard to side number two. Remember down here in the middle, there is that disconnect between the two sides. And so I'm going to use these two red wires here So that's in this row, and that's in this row, and then I'm going to connect these down here via this row, and this row, there we go. So now both sides are connected to each other, and we'll go ahead now. Go ahead now and find a voltage across the capacitors again starting with capacitor number one and so the voltage across capacitor number one oh, turn the voltage supply back on because I turned it off Okay, I see 4.88 was the highest there. Cross number two. Four point eight eight. And part of the reason why this is changing in this case is because the connections aren't very well uh they're not put together very well in the board here, so as to 
capacitor moves a little bit it's coming off with a connection so 4.88 is the third so I got 4.88 across all three capacitors that are in parallel okay and which is uh, approximately what we should be expecting if we have uh, a 5 volt voltage source they would expect something close to 5 volts across all three capacitors alright so that's how you go about checking for uh, voltages across the capacitors when you have parallel capacitors in a circuit.